Okay, in this video, I'm going to continue on with my tutorial series on vector calculus for electromagnetism. So, the video I'm going to do now is normal, the normal vector, which is perpendicular to your function. I'd like to draw your attention to my website, universityphysicstutorials.com. So, the previous videos to this are number six, where I discussed the nabla operator, or part one of that. Part two will be um, video number 11. So, that's the nabla operator, and I'll discuss that in a moment in my revision. And we also discussed the gradient of a function in video number seven. And the point to note here is the gradient of a function is a vector. That's very important. So just the, the revision, I'm going to be very quick because I'm sure you've seen this before. We define the Nabla operator, and I'm going to call it always a vector. But you, you know that's debatable whether it is a vector on its own. But I'm going to say that it is. And we define it as del del x in the i hat direction plus del del y in the j hat direction plus del del z in the k hat direction. Sometimes, by the way, you might, you might see x hat, you might see y hat, and you might see z hat. Just for, for me, the convention is i, j, k, and I prefer it that way. Um, it just makes it easier for me. All right, but there's another way of writing this which just implies the unit vector, uh, it implies the unit vectors, and it's done in, I suppose, uh, kind of a matrix, really. It's del del, that's supposed to be x, del del y and del del z. So this implies that it is a vector. Okay, and you know, so yeah, that I'm sure you've seen this this before and I'll be using I'll be interchanging between the two of these. Now if you take the gradient of a function, let's say the function is f a function of x, y and z. Well then the gradient is literally going to operate on my function. And what you're going to do is you're going to get del f del x i hat. Note it's a partial by the way because it's a function of more than one variable. Plus del f del y j hat plus del f del z k hat. All right, and I suppose we can re we can write it this way if you like. In our, I'm going to call it the matrix notation. Maybe that's not the correct way to say it, but that's what I'm going to call it. Okay, so they are equivalent statements, and this is that is the gradient of our function. Note that it is a vector. Okay, so it has still got the unit vector components, and that's very important. So next, what is a normal vector? Normal means perpendicular to your function. So let's say that this is my function and I wanted to get the normal vector. You have to do it at a particular point, by the way. Let's call it x0, y0. My normal vector will be this way. Okay, and you'll know that because you'll have, it'll be perpendicular to your tangent curve or your tangent line. Uh, that's kind of giving away what I'm about to say. So just repeat it once more. We know that tangents we know that, let's say, here's our, here's our function, we want to evaluate the, the normal, what's perpendicular at point x0, y0. Well, we know that if we get the rate of change, if we get del x, we'll say x0, del, um, excuse me, that, that's incorrect. I'll just do that once more, right? Let's say this, we fu f a function of x0, y0, right? So if I get del f at x0, del x, and if I get del f at y0, del y, I'll have the equation of my tangent line. Okay, and that's my t going through x0, y0. That'll be the equation of my, or that'll be the, yeah, that'll let me get the equation of my tangent line. Give me the rate of change, or the slope of my tangent line. All right, so it, this touches my, my curve in only one point. So in order for something to be perpendicular to it, it has also got to be perpendicular to the tangent. So there'll be a 90 degree between the tangent line, any tangent line at a point, and the normal vector at that point. So some, sometimes people call it n hat if it's a if it's a normal unit vector, or just n if it's not, nor if, if you haven't made it a unit vector. And finally, just before I finish, if we call if n is our vector, okay, well then n hat is our unit vector. Okay, it's got a magnitude of one, so it's going to be n divided by the magnitude of n. And you might say, well, why would you do this? I remember asking my professor in first year in university, why, why would you even bother using a vector if its magnitude is 1? The reason is, is because we use its direction. Okay, so we actually don't use its magnitude, but rather its direction is the important point here. Anyway, so we're going to talk about the normal vector. So I've kind of given away the argument already, but let's go. So let's say we have a function, and we're only going to talk about two dimensions, x and y. f is a function of x and y. Now, we're going to define level curves. We're going to define level curves at f of x, y, 
is equal to a constant. Okay, that's that should make sense because the function isn't changing, there's no rate of change, or the derivatives are constant or the derivatives are zero. Alright? So that is that's the definition of a, a level curve. So the function is no rate of change on a level curve. So what I'm going to do now is parameterize my, my function. So you might say, oh god, this is this this is scary stuff, because I know that it used to annoy me anyway with parameterizing curves. But this is pretty straightforward. I'm just going to use a placeholder, I'm going to call it t. This is just a dummy variable. So I'm going to call if f is going to be now a function of x, which is also a function of t, and y, which is also a function of t. So that's that's our function. We've now parameterized it. Um, we've parameterized f in t. Okay? So, right. Now, where do we go from there? That means that level curves that level curves happen at f x a function of t y a function of t equal 0. All right? Or not 0, excuse me, equal a constant. The derivative of which of course would be 0. And that's exactly what we're going to use. So, you might wonder now, why do we where do we go from here in order to work out the normal vector? Um the trick is actually to take the derivative with respect to t. That's what we're going to do. Okay. Now, how do you know? You know, why do we do this? To be honest, you know, it should be. It actually should be quite intuitive to you, but I'm not going to go there. Just accept it if you don't really understand it. But if you've done a course in uh, vector calculus, it should be quite quite intuitive. So what I'm going to do is take the the derivative with respect to t of f. I'm just going to call it f for the moment, and I'm going to take the derivative with respect to t of our constant. All right. So the derivative with respect to to any, excuse me, there's t there, of our constant is going to be zero, clearly, because it's a constant. Now note, of course, f is a function of x and y, but x is also a function of t, and y is a function of t. So we need the chain rule in order to get, that, get at this. We're going to need the chain rule to get at x, which therefore get, gets at t, and to get at y, and thereafter at t. So the chain rule is going to be as follows. It's going to be del f, del x, del x, del t. That will give us del f, del t. Or del f, del y, del y, del t, okay? Um, and yeah, that's that's what it is so far, okay? So they, they are the components, so that's how we use the chain rule. And I haven't done a video on the chain rule in this, I just, I, to be honest, I'm kind of hoping that at this level you, you'll understand the chain rule. Maybe I'll do, do one in, in, in the future. So, just to point something out, right? If I say del f, del x, I'm going to call that from now on, I'm going to, this is the, the shorthand notation I'm going to use. All right, is this uh, x subscript? So del f del y is going to be f sub y. And notice, by the way, if if your function is only a function of one variable, then you use the total derivatives, which you'll see in a moment. So putting it all together, we're going to get the following: that del uh, it's going to be del f del t because it's a partial. Okay, because f is a function of x, which is thereafter a function of t, is going to be f sub x del y del t, excuse me, dy dt, plus f sub y, um, that's, that's incorrect, df dx dt, dy dt, like that. Okay, so just just confirm, f, f sub x dx dt, f sub y dy dt, and that's going to be equal to zero. So that is the rate of change of our function which has, uh, which is, you know, gives us level curves. All right. So what I'm going to do is evaluate at the following. I'm going to define. I'm going to define. We'll say x at uh, x at t zero. I'm going to call that x zero. I'm going to call y at t zero, y zero. See, these are our two points. Remember, you must always evaluate your tangent or your normal or something at a particular point. So I'm just going to define my point. So where where we set t is equal to t zero, we get x zero and we get y zero. So I'm going to evaluate this function at x0 and y0. All right. So we're going to have del f del t, we'll say t is equal to t0. Okay, I hope you understand that notation. It's going to be equal to the following. You're going to get f sub x evaluated at x0, y0, multiplied by dx um, dx of t0 dt, you're going to get 
f sub y evaluated at x0, y0, and we're going to have dy of t0, or at t0, dt. Alright, so I'm being, trying to be explicit as I possibly can be here. Now, where do we go? Um, where do we go from here? Well, we need to, we need to I suppose, a look at this um, quickly, not quickly, but a look at this in a kind of clever way. Because we know that the gradient of a function of x and, uh, as a function of x and y is simply going to be f sub x plus f sub y. So if I took the gradient, gradient of my function at x0, y0, it's simply going to be f evaluated at x0 plus f sub y evaluated at y0, something like that. Which, I suppose, in putting it in, in the notation we have there, is going to be f sub x evaluated x0, y0. Um, sorry, I should have written that down here. f sub x evaluated x0, y0 plus f sub y evaluated x0, y0. Okay, that's where we evaluated at a particular point. So look, we, we have those points here. So this somehow contains the gradient of our function evaluated at the point x0, y0. So what's the other, other term? Well, to me it looks like a dot product. It looks like we're after getting the dot product of two, we'll say, i hat components and the dot product of two j hat components like this, which gives us a scalar. So let's suggest that there's another vector here, v. So if this, this vector is going to be dx at t0 dt i hat plus dy of t0 dt j hat. Okay, and just to rewrite our gradient again at x0, y0, the gradient of f is going to equal to, just once more, because I think, I, well, I did leave out the, I suppose, the, um, I, I left out the unit vectors. Like that. So it looks to me like we're after getting the dot product between the vector or the gradient of f evaluated x0, y0, and the gradient of v evaluated at t0, like that. So I can rewrite my equation now as the following. We say that del f del t evaluated t is equal to t0 is equal to the gradient of f evaluated at x0, y0 dot product with the with the gra uh, with the uh, with the vector v evaluated t0 and we know of course that's equal to 0. All right? So that's really it. Now, but this this is the equation in T for level curves. So this gives us all the level curves. This gives us all the level curves to our particular function. All right? So, but the thing is, we need to look at V. We saw that V, okay, is going to be equal to del X, del T, del Y, del T. But that's exactly the slope of your tangent. So v is actually our tangent vector. Now, what does the dot product give us? Well, we know that the, the dot product would say a dot b is equal to ab cos theta. Okay? And we know that theta is, mac or this cos theta is maximized when a and b are, uh, when a and b, are the, co are the cos of naught is 1, and the sine, oh, excuse me, the, the cos of 90 cos of 90 is equal to 0. So if what we're finding here is this dot product is equal to 0, that means there must be 90 degrees between them, or they are perpendicular. So what it seems to me is that the gradient function, gradient of f evaluated at the point, is perpendicular to the tangent, the tangent vector at that point, t0, which, is, which gives x, x0, y0. So the gradient is perpendicular to the tangent vector. But going back to the very start, we said that if we have a random curve and we want to evaluate the normal, we'll say we want to get the we'll say we want to get the um, the tangent at x zero, y zero. Well, we get the derivatives, okay, and this gives us the slope of our tangent line. We plug in x zero, y zero, and it gives us the equation of our tangent line. But I said that if something is perpendicular to the tangent line, then it's normal to the curve. 
So what we're after finding here is that the gradient of f evaluated x0, y0 is perpendicular to the tangent line and as a result it's normal to the curve. So what we're after finding is the normal vector of any curve is, is the gradient evaluated at a particular point. Okay, and that, that's really it. Now I know I've gone about it in a very long-winded way but I want you to be very clear because sometimes you kind of forget these things. So at the bottom line that the gradient of our function at a point equals normal at the point. It's normal to your normal to your function. So it's perpendicular to your tangent line, normal to your function. Okay? So if you want to get the if you want to get n hat, which is the unit normal, you would get the gradient of your function at the point x0, y0, sa, and you divide it by the magnitude of your vector you would have the magnitude of x0, y0, like that. And that's our unit normal. Okay, and that would just give us the direction. Because sometimes we just want the direction of the normal vector. So that's all I've got to say. Thanks for watching. Please pass it on to your friends. Subscribe to my channel. And you might also visit universityphysicstutorials.com.